Previously on the bill. Tom Norris, I'm arresting you for assault. Hey. He's definitely planning something. Same location, same methods. There's a lot of similarities, granted. We're not allowed to talk to each other. It's a mistrial. The judge is furious with us for supposedly orchestrating collusion between witnesses. Norris was under surveillance. I mean, how on earth did that happen? According to the surveillance team, he went into his parents' house and never came out. Well, he's not there now. And another one of his victims is lying in hospital. I know it looks likely, but we can't say for sure it was Norris yet. Well, you might not be able to, but I can. Norris should never have got bail. You know that, and so does that hotshot lawyer of a wife of yours. Right, OK, listen up, everybody. <coughs> Yesterday evening, a Carol Peters was brutally attacked and raped in Coal Farm Lane. She's still unconscious. PC Ryder is in attendance at St Hughes. Uniform are at the scene, gathering CCTV and talking to witnesses. The attack took place in exactly the same location as the attempted rape of Paul Merrick seven weeks ago. As you know, our prime suspect at that time was Tom Norris. He was also on trial for the murder of Vicky Miller, but yesterday was granted bail because the trial fell apart on a technicality. He's awaiting retrial and is currently missing. Now, we can't be sure that Norris carried out this attack. However, the injuries that Carol sustained are similar to those of Paul Merrick and Vicky Miller. What kind of injuries, Gough? Well, we're talking about bruising to the face, neck, cuts to the head. As well as doing a day job at the factory, Norris works as a stripper, which is how we met both these girls. He had consensual sex with Paula and Vicky prior to attacking them. Sex which included strangulation and smothering. But if he's awaiting retrial, why strike again? Because he's arrogant. And he gets a kick out of pushing the limits. Which makes him very dangerous. So we've got a witness in a rape case. A man out walking his dog described a 20-something male. Black trousers, grey hoodie with a baseball cap who he saw running out of the alley. What time? Around 9 o'clock. Did you get a look at his face? No, all he could say was I see one. He ran out of the alleyway and then three or four minutes later a silver saloon went speeding from left to right up Effra Street and he figured it could be the same guy. Tom Norris drives a silver saloon. OK, well, until Cal confirms otherwise, we've got to work on the basis that we're dealing with a serial rapist and murderer who's on the loose and could strike again at any time. So that means you've got to work fast. PC Taylor, I want you to gather every scrap of CCTV you can from around Norris' parents' house. PC Green, I want you to look at Norris's phone records. Draw up a list of every call he made and received from one o'clock yesterday. I'm going to talk to Norris's parents. I don't believe they don't know when or how he left the house last night. OK, Joe, can you go with Sam? Banksy, I want you to check out the factory and the flat that Norris shares with Danny Cox. See if he's spoken to anybody. Do you believe me now? Look, whatever misgivings I had about Norris... I don't blame you, Banksy, because I knew. I knew he'd do it. I blame myself. Tom, haven't you not harassed him enough? I can assure you, sir, there's a very good reason why we need to speak to him. I'm afraid I haven't heard from him. He's probably at home. He's not. What are your shift patterns? Seven till seven. You check with his flatmate, Dan. He was working last night, so he's probably still sleeping. Dan Cox. I'm headed there next. Thanks for your help. You lot don't give up, do you? I've already told you, I don't know where he is. He, he was in hours before his curfew. You, you've no excuse to keep tormenting him. Last night, Mr Norris, another girl was brutally attacked and raped in a similar manner to the crimes your son's been accused of. Oh, God. Is she dead? No, Mr Norris, but she is yet to regain consciousness. So it's vital to establish your son's whereabouts, if only to eliminate him from our inquiries. If you can, tell us anything. When you last saw him, where he might have gone, you need to tell us right now. The truth. We're just as concerned as you are. No, no, not because we believe he's guilty. We genuinely don't know when he went out or where he is. I, I know what it must look like. But I can put my hand on my heart and tell you my son is innocent. These accusations have ruined his life. My wife's terrified to do something stupid. We're doing everything we can to find him, Mr Norris. In the meantime, if you hear from him, you must contact us. 
For everyone's sake. I will. As long as you look, promise to make this right. Catch the real criminal. And clear my son's name. I can assure you, Mr. Norris. We want justice just as much as you do. What is it, darling? I'm busy. Around nine o'clock last night, Tom Norris strangled and raped a young woman. Did you catch him? No. Do you have any idea where he is? Are you serious? You defended him. You got him bailed. The only reason he's out is because of you. No, the only reason he's out is because your DI tried to fix his trial. That's not true, and you know it. He's raped another woman. He couldn't have done that inside, could he? Don't take it out on me. I was doing my job. Based on the evidence presented, Norris would have walked free. Mistrial or no mistrial. At least Sam Nixon has the grace to feel bad about it. She blames herself. And you blame me? Is that it? I feel terrible for any woman that gets raped. And any rapist who wants bail as well. Walk away. Another girl is lying in hospital. I'm Detective Inspector Sam Nixon. This is PC Mel Ryder. We'd like to ask you a few questions, if you feel up to it. Did he, Did he rape me? I'm afraid I, I don't know. The doctors would have to carry out an examination, and only if you're willing. Okay. In the meantime, do you, do you feel up to telling me what you remember about last night? I was walking home from a friend's house. It was just before nine. We'd had a few glasses of wine, so I decided to leave the car there and walk. I shouldn't have walked down the alleyway. There's a man jogging the other way, and so then I got hit from behind. Can you tell me anything about the man? He had a, a cap on with a hood over it. Did you see his face? No. Just. I remember like my head exploding and then I couldn't breathe. We think he was choking you. Oh, God. You stayed at your friend's most of the night. You didn't go out and have a drink or get talking to anyone? No. I've been setting me up to go travelling, so we haven't been out for ages. Thank you, Carol. You've been really brave. If you like, PC Ryder can stay with you while you have your examination. If you have any questions, she can answer them. And if you remember anything, anything at all, you must tell her. case again to look for any more connections not looking good for Norris is it so why does something tell me you're not so sure he's our man Eddie says you two found something new at the Vicky Miller murder scene yesterday one of our key witnesses Fallon changed her story she saw the killer at the boot of the car where Vicky's body was found but says he was wearing gloves meaning meaning the killer didn't leave any prints now, that doesn't mean it wasn't, Norris. But it does cast doubt, doesn't it? Mm. Not that there's any doubt in the DI's mind, of course. One way or another, Norris did it. All the evidence is pointing to her being right. It appears to be a random attack, which could be a sign of escalation. Now, Norris is a classic anger retaliatory rapist. Maybe he's no longer satisfied with punishing women he knows. He's now targeting strangers. Right, so where are we at? No luck with the CCTV. No sign of a car. Phone records? Well, they show that Norris was in the area. So I've organised a printout of the data so we can track his movements. I'm afraid I had no joy at the factory. I tried the flat that Norris shared with Dan Cox, but there was no answer. Apparently Dan was on night, so he's probably asleep. Norris's phone records, sir. The last call made was to Dan Cox at 19.58. That's before the attack. Maybe Norris was checking Cox was at work. He'd need somewhere to go afterwards to clean himself up. I think it's time we gave Dan Cox a little wake-up call. Police! 
Police, excuse me, Mr. Fox. Second bed looks like it's been slept in. So, was Tom Norris here last night? I found Norris's bail conditions and a booking for his next strip show. He was here, Gov. So, where is he now, Dan? I've got nothing to say to you. Dan Cox, I'm arresting you for assisting an offender. We know from his phone records Tom called you. He wanted help. He was getting threatened by text. Death threats. Death threats? From Vicky Miller's boyfriend. He thinks Tom killed her. Tom just wanted somewhere to stay. He didn't want his parents in danger. Oh, and you let him? I told him one night was here, then he had to go. Andy Hicks went back to Australia. Vicky's boyfriend. He's not around to threaten anybody. Tom showed me the text. Last night, a woman was raped in the same spot as Paula Merrick. She's in hospital, traumatised and beaten. It's got nothing to do with Tom. I don't really have time for this. A man was seen running away from the scene wearing clothes that were previously described as Tom's. A grey hoodie and a baseball cap. Sound familiar? A silver saloon car was spotted. Tom didn't need your help because he was worried about death threats or concern for his parents. He wanted somewhere to hide from us. What else did you do to help him? I took him to Victoria Station. When? This morning after work. He said he was going to Dover. To France? You helped him abscond! Well, he wasn't going to get a fair trial here, was he? Not with you trying to fit him up. What about the girl, Dan? Well, I didn't know about that, did I? You convinced me. We went to Victoria in his car. After I dropped him off, he asked me to dump it. And did you? It's in Darrow Road. OK, everybody, listen up. Cox dropped Norris at Victoria Station straight after his shift at 7 o'clock this morning. He's heading for Dover. DC Banks, I need you to circulate an all-port warning and check CCTV footage of Victoria Station. There's a chance we might catch him before he leaves the country. PC Taylor can assist. Will, can you check Norris's bank accounts? They might tell us when he bought a ticket. Cox claims he drove Norris's car to Victoria Station, which he later dumped in Darrow Road. This car could house vital forensic evidence, so DC Masters and I will head down there immediately. I don't see it at the other end. Is he lying? This is all double yellow, so I've just rung the council to see if it's been towed away. Dion Nixon. Yeah, Romeo Kilo 03 Lima Hotel Whiskey. That's great, thank you. Owed about an hour ago, still on the lorry. You got the picture? He is circulated as wanted if seen detained. Thanks. We're emailing all the CCTV images from Victoria Station from 7am onwards over now. Dover are doing the same. There's an awful lot to trawl through, but we should be able to narrow it down to the time he bought his train ticket once his transaction records have come through. Unless he paid cash. Jacob, there's no text from Australia on Norris's phone records. And Andy Hicks didn't have a clue what I was talking about, poor thing. Thanks, Beth. I'll let Dianne Nixon know. Are you willing to apologise? What? OK, I'll be there in a minute. I'm just nipping out for a minute. No problem. Take your time. What's wrong with the phone? Nothing. Except I shouldn't be doing this. Doing what? Reaching client confidence. That's a turn around. Just listen. I think you should speak to Dan Cox. Why? Because his relationship with Tom Norris is creepy, to say the least. Thanks for the tip, but we arrested Dan two hours ago. What for? Assisting an offender. Why? What's Norris said? Pre-trial, he told me they go back further than Cox probably ever admitted to you. That's news. Anything else? Norris alluded to some trouble at a previous place of employment. Cox worked there too. He was concerned you might find out about it. Any details? Ask at the factory. Might be on their applications. It could even be something to do with their strip show. Anyway, I've already told you more than I should. Signs of a conscience. Don't push it. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. I'll try human resources. Thanks. Did you find him? No, not yet, but we will. You won't find a single person in this factory who thinks Tom Norris is guilty. I was here to ask questions about Dan Cox. Dan Cox thinks the same as the rest of us. Did Cox and Norris ever mention that they worked together somewhere else? No. Right, and even if they had, you wouldn't tell me because your mate Norris is such a good bloke. He is. Shortly before nine last night, a young woman was raped. Norris is AWOL. 
Unless it was he and you can vouch for him, I'm going to do my job. And your opinion about the man is not going to stop me. It's DC Banks, Sunhill. In case you or anyone else around here gets their memory back. Anything significant, Eddie? Oh, I can tell you he's a pig. I already know that. There's chips under that seat that have been there for months. Speaking of which, it's lunchtime. Come on, Eddie. What have you got? Well, this do you? It's blood. But is it Norris's or Carol's? Can you bag it out for me, please? Yes, Gov. OK, I'll be right there. Something's shown up on Norris's bank records. OK, I'll have these photographed and then I'll get the uniform down to St Hughes to see if Carol can identify them and then straight to forensics. Let me know if anything else significant comes up here. I love it when she's like this. Hi. Are you OK? I've remembered something. It might be nothing. After the attack, when I was coming round, someone was moving me. Do you think it was your attacker? No, I, I don't think so. They sort of folded me on my side and they were holding my wrist like they were taking my pulse. Right, OK. Was it a man or a woman? I don't know. I'm sorry. No, thanks, Carol. It might not seem like much, but even the smallest detail can be useful. Carol, I'm PC Green. Sorry to interrupt, but D.I. Nixon has asked me to show you some photos of clothes we've recovered. We believe they may have been worn by your attacker. Does any of this look familiar? Do you recognise anything? Yeah, the hoodie, that's the same logo. Yeah, and that's the hat. The purchase was made on Norris's debit card at Victoria this morning. So on the face of it, Dan Cox told the truth. Well, we've got enough to charge him with assisting an offender. But if he's cooperating, we should release him. Well, I probably will, Gov, but not yet. Eddie's just found a hoodie with blood on the sleeve in Norris's car. I'd like to know whose blood that is. I'd also like to see what Banksy in uniform can turn up. Norris hasn't turned up yet? No, and I've narrowed it down to the time when he bought the ticket. There's still a few more angles to go, then. Why have you been left to do this on your own? This is priority. Where's DC Banks? Um, I don't know, Mum. He had a phone call. He had to nip out. Nip out? What could be more important than this? I need to speak to the manager about Tom Norris and Dan Cox. It really is very urgent. Thanks. <coughs> DC Banks. Glenn? Of course. No problem. I'm in the public corner of Taft Road. I'll wait outside. Mum, these are the preliminary findings on Carol Peters. He used a condom. Well, he'll be more forensically aware now. The other cases will have taught him that. Still strangulation and rape. She remembers something strange. Um, she thinks that she was put in the recovery position and had someone check her pulse after the attack. What, Norris had a fit of remorse? She thinks it was after he'd gone. Thanks, Mum. Um, don't suppose you've seen DC Banks anywhere? No, no sorry, Mum. This is a surprise. Dan Cox wasn't there for the whole shift. OK. He got a call about eight. He was doing maintenance on line three, but I was close by. I got the impression he was on the phone to Tom Norris. What was said? Cox was saying, I don't know about any key, I don't know what you're talking about, but it was, like, heated. Is that all? No. Twenty minutes later, I went to look for Dan. Couldn't find him anywhere. About ten o'clock, he came up for his break. I'm going to ask where he was. He said he was working on line six. You didn't think he was? No. Why's that? First off, we weren't even running line six. We only run half as many lines at night. Second thing unchecked, he wasn't there. So, from the time you heard them talking on the phone at eight o'clock through to when you saw him upstairs at ten, he wasn't at the factory? No. You did the right thing, thanks. Take it you know what your client's done. I hope you're proud of yourself. As I told my husband, Norris only got bail because of your transgressions in court. Heaven forbid any victim should matter more than some trumped-up irregularities. 
A woman was raped. Yeah. And the only reason I'm here is because Jacob told me you'd started to accept your responsibility in this chain of events. Told you what? Everything okay, Edgar? Where have you been? I'll be waiting for you in my office. Great. I was just about to return your call. Did you get anywhere with what I told you? I will eventually, but the fact you're not in a hurry. Tom Norris and Dan Cox both worked at a gym. Norris quit rather than face a sexual harassment tribunal. How does Cox fit in? He gave a statement saying he'd been there and the girl was lying. You're a double act. Thank you. DC Banks, in here now. Shut the door. What do you think you're doing telling Norris's barrister that we admit to fitting him up? I never said that, Gov. I think you got the wrong end of the stick. What was she doing here? A bit of informal intelligence, Gov. That better not be from you to her. I think I'd do that outside the station. Well, where would you do it, DC Banks? That's not what I meant. I think you and your wife ought to get your story straight. Are we done, Mum? Not quite. Maybe you should think about your future here. Because I will not work with someone I cannot trust. Now we're done. What was that? Bang out of order, that's what. What are you doing? Get out! I don't care if you stick me on discipline charge for this. I'm going to say it. I do not care if you and my wife do not like each other, but I will not sit quietly for one and then the other to tell me I'm a bent policeman. Ever since Norris's trial began, you have never believed that he is guilty. I said the evidence was not a good fit. So you go and find other evidence to undermine what we already have. I was looking for holes because I knew damn well that the defence were ahead of us, so far ahead of us. You know what they think? That Norris and Cox are in it together. Something Mel told me. Someone went back to the scene of the crime and put Carol in the recovery position. Doesn't fit Tom's MO. What's this? Employment history. The two of them go back at least four years. Sexual harassment? Where did you get this? Naomi. So, officially, we don't have it. And what's more, one of Dan's colleagues developed a conscience. He told me that Dan left his shift after eight and was missing until 10 o'clock. give us the account if he was involved to make us believe him to get out of custody but if we act like we don't know any of this and we release cox we can put him under surveillance intrusive surveillance in his flat so what do you think you were skeptical last time i agree with the di so will you authorize it tom norris is out there somewhere gov he's extremely dangerous and all our leads have come to nothing cox could lead us to him even if we charge cox with what he's admitted we'd have to bail him by not charging him he's going to think he's fooled us I understand the psychology. What worries me is the danger. To put it another way, Gov, do we have a choice? You're being released on bail, Mr. Cox, pending further inquiries. Can I charge him with anything? No. You could be charged with assisting offender, but in the light of your cooperation, we've chosen not to. However, given that you now know about last night's attack, if you assist Tom Norris in any way from this point on, you will face charges. I understand. If he contacts you and you fail to let us know, the same applies. Sorry, then. Got visual on the suspect. DR yeah, Nixon and Banksy are at the Arbo office at Cox's flat. Keep them informed directly. 
All received, over. Right, I'll stay one street back, keep me posted, yeah? So what we got here? I'm trying to figure out where Cox might have met up with Norris so he can pull the CCTV and find the car. Right, well, this might help with some credit card info on Norris. Apparently he bought petrol on Ted Elaine at 8.50 last night. On the way from the flat to the crime scene. Check it out. Any CCTV on Norris, we want it. Gov. OK, thanks, Will. Cox is a minute away. If they are working together, what do you think the dynamic is? Do they take it in turns? One man on lookout, one man committing the offence? Maybe Cox is always the backup? It's possible. Doesn't fit the normal pattern. Which is? Everyone has a turn. That's what group rape is. Showing your mates you're a man, you're in control. There's always a leader, the alpha male, and there's always a reluctant participant who tries to take care of the victim afterwards. Let's see if they get home safe. Puts them in the recovery position. Cox is here. He's calling a cab. And he's packing a bag. Tell Will and Mel to take the lead. We'll be right behind them. Will, have you got a visual on the taxi? Yeah, we have visual. Trade, D.I. Nixon and I will follow. Roger that, Gov. <laughs> He's in the pub. Someone's leaving, doing. He's a surprise act. That accounts for the bag. I was here earlier, looking for the manager. They're off in a double act. But according to the booking form that Joe found at Dan's flat this morning, this was Norris's gig, not Dan's. So Dan's covering for him. I want someone in there. That rules me out, Gov. Well, he'd recognise me. So that leaves Mel. I'll go and give it a good news. Guess where you're going. that Dan Cox spent the whole day lying to us, correct? With enough truth mixed in to make it stick, yeah. Exactly. He's manipulative. But what's his end game? To protect his friend. Yes and no. At this stage, he's protecting himself. OK. If we're wrong, and Cox is the innocent party, he can't lead us to Norris. If we're right, and Cox is implicated, then he has to know that sooner or later we're going to find something wrong. I think I've made a mistake. He's going to run. Gov, this gentleman is from the petrol station on Tedder Lane. Unfortunately, the CCTV isn't working there, so Omar here has agreed to come in and look at some photos for us. OK? No. Him. Are you sure? Yes, positive. Him. I think Cox may try and leg it, so I want you on foot round the back of the building, just in case. Dear Nixon. We've got a positive ID on Dan Cox. He used Tom Norris's credit card to buy petrol from a service station on Tedder Lane. What time? 2050 hours. Thanks, Joe. Cox was near the scene of the crime last night. We've got an ID. I want him back in custody. What are we arresting for? Assisting Norris, rape, everything. Suspects 
suspect has climbed the wall into Kitchener Park. He's heading towards Malkin Street. Roger, heading that way. you on suspicion of assisting in murder of Vicky Miller for the attempted rape of Paul Nice work, Mark. Thank you, Mark. So what's your strategy? Give Cox a get-out. Buy into the idea that Norris is a sexual aggressor and he isn't. Do you think you can flip him? Get him to tell us where Norris is? That's what I'm gunning for. Why did you run, Dan? Panic. What have you got to panic about? Where were you at ten to nine last night? At work. One of your colleagues looked for you at the factory. He says you weren't there. And we have positive ID of you buying petrol on Tedder Lane at ten to nine. Okay. What this is, Dan, is a chance for you to account for yourself. You should take this chance. Okay? We know that he called you before you left work. What was that conversation about? Keys. What about keys? I told him I didn't want him to stay. He said I didn't have any choice. He'd let himself in with his own. And what did you do? Drove home to have it out of him. He gave me this story about being threatened by Vicky's boyfriend. I made him promise to leave in the morning and then went back to work. You had the call at eight o'clock. Fifty minutes later, you're buying petrol. I did that on my way back. Using Tom's credit card. Was Tom with you at ten to nine? No. Then why were you using his card? Okay, so he was with me. What were you doing? He asked me how to drive him. Where to? Old Farm Lane. He lied to me. He told me he's picking up a girl like a bait. Go on. He told me I'd drop him off around the corner and wait. When he came back, there was blood on his sleeve. And what did you do? The girl who was attacked told us that somebody tried to help her. Was that you, Dan? With the benefit of the tape, the suspect nodded his head. Why did you do that? I didn't want her to die. Like Vicky. He's out of control, Dan. Where is he? Last time I saw him was at Victoria Station, I swear. Lying. If Norris went to Victoria, why isn't he caught on CCTV? Mm. Cox is turning it off and on like a tap. On the upside, he's put himself at the crime scene. And every time we interview that man, he gives us exactly as much as we have evidence for. Just... Go on. What if I've got it wrong about Norris? What if they're not a double act and Dan has been acting on his own all along? If that's the case, where is Tom? I think we should be looking at Dan as our prime suspect. Take Joe and Eddie and go back to the flat and search it again. This time for things that link him, not Norris, to the crimes. Okay. He's admitted to being there but not knowing what was going down until afterwards. There are holes all over it. You know why Cox admitted going back to the girl, don't you? Why? Compromises the forensics. 
He uses a condom and anything else we find, he says it was because he was playing Good Samaritan. What kind of car does Cox drive? Mitsubishi. Just found this at the back of the cutlery box. That's a strange place to keep your car key. And why did you take a cab earlier on? Whiskey uniform 53, Hotel Victor Zebra. Black Evo? Let's have a little look. Hey, hey, Joe. Found this in the bin. It's a car park receipt. Look at the time on that. 7.25, sir. So why would Cox go straight from work to leave his car in a car park less than half a mile from where he lives to then hide the keys and throw away the ticket? Let's find out. There it is. He's about to see. God, it's Tom Norris. Is he dead? Sierra Oscar from DC Masters. Urgent assistance required. Gately car park. Guff, Norris is alive, but only just. He's been severely beaten. They're trying to stabilise him at St Hughes. Cox left him for dead. Uniform are chasing up CCTV at the car park, which is bound to place him at the scene. We need to know about the others. Norris is in the car, absolutely. But what about these women? What could possibly have been his motive? Carol Peters was a cynical attack to frame Norris. He wore his clothes, he drove his car. Possibly. But did he kill Vicky? And did he rape Paul Merrick? If so, why? Who was his real target? The women? Or Tom? Did he do everything we thought was Norris purely to frame him? And will he blame everything on Tom? Yes, he will. Because he thinks Tom's dead. And dead men can't talk. Hello, lovely people. Look what I found in the boot. Looks like it fell out of Norris's trouser pocket. It's a car key? Yeah, bingo. This is the key in the Vicky Miller murder case. Whoever hid her body in the boot of the car had to have had this key. It was an accident. We had a fight. When? When I went home during my shift, like I told you before. So what happened? We had an argument that turned into a fight. I pushed him down the stairs. I think he might have broken his neck. He wasn't moving. Why don't you call the police? An ambulance? I just didn't. Can you tell me what that is? This key is the reason you didn't dial 999, isn't it? I don't know what you mean. I think you do, Dan. This is the key to Vicky Miller's car. The car her body was found in. When Tom Norris called you at 8 o'clock, he just found this key in your flat, hadn't he? Oh. I don't know about any key. I don't know what you're talking about. We have it on good authority that these are your exact words. I already explained that. It's about Tom breaking his bail conditions, letting himself into the flat. No, Dan. Tom worked it out. Why you had Vicky's key and how you sat back and let him be accused of an attempted rape and murder you'd committed. That's why you had a fight. No. It was about him letting himself in. I've already told you. The journey from the factory to your home takes about 15 minutes. If Tom Norris was lying at the bottom of your stairs before 8.30, how can he commit a rape at 9 o'clock? He can't. But you can. You took his car, his clothes his wallet, and you raped a complete stranger. You went to elaborate lengths to make it look like it was him. You thought Norris was dead. You've admitted you pushed him. But he isn't dead. You didn't finish the job. Your friend is lying in St Hugh's, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's more than happy to talk to us. Look at me, Dan. Dan, look at me. It wasn't just Vicky and Carol, was it? We know you attacked Paula, too. She was a tease. 
They all are. She was loving it, and then she thought she could just change her mind. Why should you care? She wasn't your girlfriend, she was Tom. She wasn't his girlfriend. Is that what always happens, Dan? Norris gets to the girls and doesn't let you have your fair share. No, he just picks the wrong ones. I told him she'd cry rape. She needs to be taught a lesson. Oh, so you're protecting Tom. Okay. So what lesson did you teach Vicky Miller on Tom's behalf? I didn't mean to kill her. But you don't understand. She liked what he did to her. Help me understand. Tom was sick of her. She was like a limpet. The worse he treated her, the more she wanted it. And that bothered you? What kind of woman enjoys that? It's disgusting. You mean what kind of woman enjoys sex? You should see them at our strip shows. They're all over us. And when it's finished, they put on this innocent act, like we're beneath them. Tom should never have gone anywhere near a girl like Vicky. Did Tom tell you he had sex with Vicky in the car? I didn't have to be told. You watched? No. But you did go out there? I went out there to tell her what he says about her when she's gone. What he really thinks about her. And was she still in the car? Yeah. Did you get in the car? Yeah. But not for what she thought. She thought I wanted her too. I wouldn't touch her with a ten foot pole. Did you strangle her? She wouldn't shut up. Did you strangle her? I had things to say. Did you strangle her? To shut her up, yeah. But I didn't do anything else. I'd never go anywhere near a woman like that. So Tom had nothing to do with it? Yeah, then he just admitted it all. According to him, Vicky's murder was unintentional. And as for the others, he just wanted to teach them a lesson on Norris's behalf. He didn't think those kind of women were good enough for him. I can see the diminished responsibility plea in my love. Four out of four serious crimes have been cleared up. There won't be any problem when this comes to court. So come on, you've both done a great job. I think it's time to call it a night, don't you? You coming? One last thing to do, Gov, and then I will. How long have you been there? Not long. We've caught the man who attacked you. He confessed. Did he say why me? Yes. Why? To copy a crime that happened in the same place. I don't understand. To make another man look guilty. So I was raped to make someone else look guilty? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yes, it is. When you're ready, we can tell you more. I just thought you should know we've got him. Thank you. How was she? Vulnerable. You didn't have to wait for me. I could get a taxi. I wanted to apologise. No need. I should apologise to you. I made a mistake about Norris and... you put me straight. Teamwork. That's what it's all about. I spoke out of town about your wife. 
There, I should have been more discreet. What I said to her... I don't need to know, Banksy. No, Gav, I want to say. I respect your commitment. And what I said to her was that you cared enough to feel it. We all care. It's being effective that counts. No, not everyone does, Gov. And what you just said, putting the two together, that's what I respect. Thank you. It's mutual. Can I give you a lift? No, you go home to your wife. I'll get a taxi. Next time on The Bill. Where'd you get these, Charlie? From the watermark. Nearly perfect. She could lead us straight to this caliphing operation. Hang on a minute, I've got two kids at high risk here. I wouldn't want you to frighten the living daylights out of her. Go on the floor now! Oh, <laughs>